Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy. Hey, so welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a quick recap or as quick as I can possibly make it. Uh, um, the Umbrella Academy episode, season two, episode six, A Light Supper. Okay, so um, it goes back to 1961 when Allison arrives and, you know, her first kind of getting a look at uh, the town. And so at this point, she's still injured, so she's not able to speak, which means she's not able to use her powers. And so... She runs into this diner and they point to the sign that I believe said no colors or something. So now she realizes, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not home anymore. So she goes out and obviously she starts, she starts getting hassled on the street by these white guys. And she brushes past them and they're like, "What well, are you? Um, don't you know that you're in the wrong part of town?" It's you know, all this, all this ignorant and craziness. And so she kept walking and so one of them grabbed her and she ended up punching the head out of them. And then they gave chase. So she ran and ran and ran until she got to the salon where the women inside basically grabbed their, their knives and their hot combs or whatever else and basically told them, guys, I think that you all in the wrong part of town. And I think y'all best be leaving. And so they left. And so that's how she met um, met the uh, the women who would eventually become her her and uh, Raymond's friend. Well, well, they were already, they already knew Raymond, but they that's how she met everyone. And so they eventually took her on, and she uh, worked in the salon. She uh, would do the cleaning and things of that nature. And so one night they were having a meeting, and Raymond arrived. And so um, they locked eyes, and you know that was that. And so, um, I, I don't remember the month that she arrived. I don't even know if it said the month she arrived. But around this time, it's Christmas. And he decided to go in and ask her out. And from that point on, they were um, they were inseparable. And so, we flash back to five. He still has Lila on the ground. And the handler is basically, you know, basically telling him what she... Um, once from him and in return she could do this particular thing so what she wanted to she want basically order to be restored she wants to be the head of the agency again and in order to do that she has to kill the board and her she's trying to um she's trying to ha uh, have this deal with number five if he kills the board then she will get his family back to 2019 and of course he's like you know he ain't really paying her um any mind he's thinking about it but she was basically like well you know where to find me if you know um if all your other options fail and so that's basically how that was left um so vanya diego and luther they're at ellis and they're talking about the invitation to um, meet with their father and luther is dead set against it he said you know how he is he's manipulative he's gonna probably try to t turn us against each other one by one and luther is just not here for it. he does not trust him and diego is like well you know we have to go basically we don't have any other choice and the thing that you know we have working in our favor is that we're all together and so they you know reluctantly agreed to to this meeting so Klaus is at his, at his manor and Ben is trying to talk to him. It's basically like, you know, the world is going to end. You need to tell these people the truth. You know, you're, you know, you need to stop being basically a narcissistic asshole. And these people should spend basically whatever time they have left with their families. And, you know, they, they've been following you and Jill, he, Ben clearly has this thing for um, Jill. Jill is one of, one, obviously one of the followers. And he's like, some of them can't even go back to their families. Jill gave up a scholarship and their family started not to come home. And, you know, basically it's all your fault. You need to fix this. And so Klaus, he goes out, okay, to his credit. He did go out and talk to them. Basically tell him that he was a fraud. Da, 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 da. But of course, them being devout, they was like, oh, well, we're all frauds in some way. And it, it didn't turn out the way he <laughs> expected it to turn out. And I mean, basically, Klaus' attitude was like, I tried to tell them, but they didn't want to leave. So, um, Ben's just standing there like, oh, Jesus Christ, okay. So, um, they go back into the room, and Ben is still telling him how, you know, he need to get his stuff together, and da 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 da, da. And, and, uh, Klaus insults him by saying, you know what, now I know who you remind me of. He said, Dad. And Ben, it was like a knife in his heart, like, how could you say that to me? Don't, you know, how could you, how could you... 
how could you say I remind you of that man? And so he got mad and he ends up um, jumping into Klaus for a minute. And um, around this time, uh, Jill walks in with, surprise, surprise, David. And so Klaus turns around. Of course, he's surprised to uh, see David and David wants to talk to him. So we flash to um, Allison and Raymond. They're at home. Remember how in the last episode was how she said she was going to tell him the truth. And so she's telling him now he knows that he's like, oh my God, you know, you know, there was a black president and now you're saying that you have power and now he wants her to prove that she has these powers. And so they go to the white side of town and they go into this um, department store and of course the uh, clerk is like, we don't serve. Uh, she wanted him, wanted uh, him to let Raymond try on clothes and he was like, we don't let Negroes try on clothes. You have to buy it and leave. And so he saw firsthand how she used her powers to persuade the man to let him try on clothes. And so they was there for a minute trying, and he was trying on things, and um, he was they were just having the time of their life, right? And it was all fun and games. And then they come to a department store that sells women clothes, and then she goes in to get a couple of things. And Raymond was like, well, why don't you use this ability all the time, especially for the calls? And so they came up to the diner where the sit-in happened, and, you know, all the... And all this craziness, and she goes in. And of course, Raymond is trying to stop her, and so she goes to sit at the counter. And the guy behind the counter, a counter, basically told her that she needed to get her black ass out of there, and it was a whole thing. And she used her ability. He was like, "No, what you need to do is shut up, and you need to get me a cup of coffee." And so he grabs the coffee, and he's pouring the coffee, and she kept telling him more, and he pours and pours and pours. And at this point, Raymond is telling her, "Okay, you need to stop." She pour, he, he's continuing to pour until this hot coffee is pouring all over his hand. So this man has like third degree burns on his hand. And Raymond basically, you know, gets her to snap out of it like you need to stop. You're hurting him. And so he got, so they, you know, she ends up getting up to leave. And he walks behind her. And all of a sudden the ish got real. Like he was asking her why she don't use her ability. And sometimes she just, you know, she, she was justifiably upset. But that was not, that wasn't right. So, um... They, uh, so they, you know, end up leaving. He grabbed the bags and they tear out of there. And, uh, they get her, they get home. And then he starts asking him, um, so they left and they head home. So, let you know, we see this bingo parlor and it's like, it took a while. I'm like, who the hell is playing bingo? And so it's, uh, Lila and, um, and her mom, and then she's never playing bingo. Like, I want to win that patio furniture. Something crazy. And so she's uh, talking to her about um, Lila is upset because she feels like her mother doesn't have as much faith in her as she does number five. Because Lila is like, well, you said that he was the best assassin that the uh, organization has ever had. And she was like, uh, this is the hand. Her mom was like, well, I was just, you know, just pu puffing up his ego, and I have other plans for you. And, um, you know, I, you know, I don't. We need to have a scapegoat. So she's starting to convince her that number five is supposed to be their scapegoat. Okay. So then Lila asked about Diego. Like, well, so what about Diego? And so her mom was kind of giving her a hard time. Like, oh, so do you have feelings for him? And she started clowning her. Like, how could you fall for your mark? And da 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 da. And, she, and of course, uh, Lila tried to play it off. But you can tell in her face that, you know, she does kind of have, I don't know, as much as a sociopath can have feelings for somebody, I guess. I don't know. Um. <laughs> Uh, so Klaus and, and um, so Klaus and David they're now walking the grounds and they're talking and David apologized for punching him in the face and you know Klaus he started asking Klaus all these questions like how do you know all this stuff about me and you know it doesn't make any sense and um, he you know basically you know, told him he started going he, he was like I don't believe you and so he started telling him more stuff about him and he was like, well, how could you possibly know that? He said, well, I am a prophet. And so, of course, David was like, I don't believe in that, you know, that kind of stuff. And so he went on and told him, like, in 1968, basically, you go to war and you never come home. And um, he gave him what uh, the, what Klaus had around his neck were dog tags. And it was, I guess, David's dog tags. And so David looked at him and he was like, well, I don't really know what you want me to do. You know, I, my family have all these expectations of me and, you know, uh... 
uh, Klaus is like, I, you know, I really don't want you to go. You know, you don't really need to do this. You don't need to lie about who you are anymore. And then that's when he revealed that he already enlisted and that he leaves in a few, in a few weeks. And so, of course, Klaus is devastated. And, you know, they have some words and David storms off. Around this time, one of uh, Klaus' followers show up with the, um, the invitation to meet with his dad. Um, so Allison and Raymond, they make it home and Allison asked her, you know, asked her, I guess what he wanted to ask her, like, did you ever use your ability on me? And she, you know, said no, which I, you could believe because up until she, that night when he was being attacked by the police, I, I, she probably wasn't, she, you could tell she wasn't even confident in her ability. Conf she was no longer as confident as she was in her ability, but when somebody she cared about was being hurt, that's when she was able to, it came out. So I can, you can imagine, you can believe that she never used her ability. Um, and so they look over and they see this envelope on the floor and that's how she got her invitation. Um, so the assassins, they're in this sauna and the handler is there and she's basically telling them how she, they, she could serve up Diego on a plate and Diego is the person that killed her brother. She could tell them exactly where he's going to be. And the only thing she asks is that they don't hurt number five. So she didn't get, came up, made a deal with, with, uh, the assassins. Okay. So, um, so number five arrives at the build, at this building and he's on the elevator and before the door closes, that's when everybody else piles on so luther diego vanya allison uh klaus and ben so they're all on the ele elevator and they get to the top and there's this restaurant this tiki something restaurant and so they're all going around talking about who's going to be the one to talk to their dad and tell him what's going on da -da -da -da. And then he arrives. He just walks in like any other thing and sits down. And he's basically like, okay, who are you guys? You know, my uh, my people say you don't work for MI5, or the CIA. You don't work. So who, who are you people? And more than one of you has called me dad. So who, who in the hell are you people, right? <laughs> and so number five, basically, he started explaining um, who they were and how they know him. And he talks about their abilities. And, of course, he wanted proof. And so, one by one, they basically show they showed um, their abilities. And so, he basically told them that, uh, no, um, Diego ends up showing him this photo of him on the grassy knoll and saying that, well, can you explain this photo? Why are you here? This is the, the, the exact spot where, um, I guess the shooter was when Kennedy was assassinated. You're going to assassinate Kennedy. Da, da, da. And so, um, his father was basically like, okay, so you think you got it all figured out? And he basically cut Diego down with his tongue. Just you could just you could see the soul just came out of Diego. Just talked to him like he was crazy. And um, people, just, they, everybody, kind of sit around and was like, oh shit, okay. Um, so number five um, tells him that the end of the world is going to happen, and they need his help. And Ben was tired of being ignored, so he enters into Klaus and introduces himself. And next, you know, Klaus falls onto the damn floor. And now his their father's like, "Okay, I've had enough of the buffoonery and the cluttery." Um, and he basically asks to speak to number five alone. So um, they all, the rest of them, got you know, piled on the elevator and went and um, went out. And as they were leaving, Diego saw their mom sitting in the car, and she he went over and he started talking to her. Vanya saw Sissy. Um, Sissy walks up and she has Vanya's invitation. And so she wanted she asked Vanya if they can go off and talk. And so she Vanya left with her. And Diego gave the mom the photo of their of their dad and tell him that he's gonna assassinate Kennedy and you need to do something to stop this. And you can tell she looks concerned, but she basically didn't yeah, she, at least she didn't want to let on to Diego like this is crazy. He would never do such a thing. And so, you know, Diego walks off. And I don't know. I don't think the other people saw her. I don't think at this point Diego's the only person that, that have, uh, has seen her. Um, so, basically, yeah, that was Diego's thing. He wanted to stop her. But um, she doesn't really believe him. So, number five and the dad, they're still upstairs in the bar talking. And he said, you seem to be the more mature or well adjusted of the two. He seems like, maybe it's because I'm the oldest. <laughs> and um, he, you know, they talked and he told him about how he, they started talking about time travel and how he jumped uh, 
too far in the future and he was stuck there for like 45 years and then he jumped back but he jumped too far back and then he you know end up bringing the rest of his family with him and he was like why don't you start small this is dad and he said what do you mean why don't you try seconds instead of decades and um number five was like i we really don't have the time for me to i'm um, trying to figure this out right now like we really need your help for what's to come and he basically was like, I, you know, he's not getting involved. He's like, you know, worlds are destroyed all the time. And, you know, it's just, the world has been destroyed a number of times and is, I guess, remade itself. I don't know what he was saying to that book, to the, uh, to the guy, but he was just basically like, I'm not getting involved. And, you know, the, uh, number five told him, like, if you don't help me, then I'm going to basically have to make a deal with the devil. <laughs> I'm going to have to make a deal with somebody that I really don't want to make a deal with. And so now, you know, it's like, okay, so what is number five going to do? So Elliot arrives home. And, of course, the assassins are there because the handler gave him gave them his address. And that's where Diego was staying. And so they basically tortured the poor man to death, trying to find out where Diego was. So you have Vanya and Sissy. They're, they're sitting in the car and they're talking. And Sissy was trying to explain to her, like, this is a dangerous time for people like you and me. People are not understanding, and um, sometimes, you know, we don't always get the life that we want, and it's not that we don't want it, it's just, you know, it's just, basically, we're just victims of the time that times that we live, and Vanya and Von basically told her that we could leave, and I could protect you, and you don't have to worry about, you know, this kind of stuff, we'll just, we will do what we need to do, and I will take, I will take care of you, and so she... Was she bought into it like yeah okay so she's all agreed and ready to go on off with Vanya and then you see Carl follow them so Carl is standing off to the side watching them have sex in Sister's car so we already know there's gonna be some blowback from blowback from that so um. Luther and Diego uh, grabs home, aka Elliot's house, and they see blood, and they basically tortured Elliot to, and just it was vicious. But Elliot is now dead, and they left some uh, message um, for Diego, and they wrote it in Elliot's blood, and so that's basically how this episode ends. I was like, oh, poor Elliot. He was just such an innocent, nice guy, good guy, who was trying to help them out, and it was like, that, mm, they, they really tortured him. So that's how this episode ended, and I'm going to end this here, and I will talk to you guys later.